Hello everyone, welcome back to the pharmacovigilance series. In this video, we will discuss individual case safety report. If at all you have any question, you can comment below in comment box. As we all know, medicinal product carries some risk along with the therapeutic effect and may cause some side effect in a patient who has been administered with particular medicinal product. Thus, drug monitoring is necessary during clinical trials and post-marketed use of a drug. For this purpose, pharmaceutical companies collect reports related to the adverse reaction which occur due to their products both in clinical and post-marketed use of product. Pharmacovigilance department also plays a very important role in continuous monitoring of a drug activities during the clinical and post-marketed use of a drug. Thus, they collect the ICSR from various sources and process it so that required actions can be taken in regard with the medicine of interest. Now, first we will see what is meant by the ICSR. Individual Case Safety Report that is ICSR is an individual case safety report where information is provided by a primary source to describe suspected adverse reaction related to the administration of one or more medicinal products to an individual patient at a particular point of time. These individual case safety reports are processed in safety databases like RSG, Ergus, etc. Once you report ICSR to marketing company, then it is mandatory for the company to submit the report to regulatory authority. Now, here the question comes in mind that where these reports come from? As all we know, once the medicinal product launch in the market, then drug monitoring or drug surveillance starts in two ways like passive and active. In passive surveillance, no active measures are taken to look for the adverse event other than the encouragement of health professionals and others to report the safety concerns. Here, reporting is completely based on initiative and motivation of the potential reporters. This is the most common form of pharmacovigilance. And this method is commonly referred as a spontaneous or voluntary reporting. Whereas, in case of the active surveillance, there are active measures are taken to detect the adverse event. This is managed by active follow-up after the treatment and the events may be detected by asking patient directly or screening the patient records. Further, on the basis of source of information, these reports are categorized as solicited and unsolicited. Now moving towards the solicited reports, these reports derive from organized data collection system like clinical trials and patient support program while unsolicited reports are obtained from unorganized sources like literature, internet, etc. For better understanding, here we will discuss each source briefly. First is spontaneous or voluntary reporting. As we discussed earlier, spontaneous reports are nothing but reports where no active measures are taken other than the encouragement of healthcare professional or other healthcare professional. Second is literature source. Pharmaceutical companies do regular screening of public literature to check whether any adverse event is posted related to their products. If they find anything, then they need to analyze this information and should handle these findings in the same way as other adverse reaction report. Next is the internet report or social media report. This safety report received from the regular screening of website, which are under management of marketing authorization holder. Marketing authorization holders are not expected to screen external website for adverse drug reaction information However, if they find, if they become aware of an adverse reaction on a website which is not under their management, though the case should be accepted for reportability. Next is the regulatory or health authority cases. These reports are safety reports 
on serious adverse drug reaction originating from regulatory authorities and these are subjected for expedited reporting in upcoming video we will see what are the health authority and regulatory authority cases next is a partner cases these reports are based on service data exchange agreement this agreement states the processes for exchanges of safety information including timelines and regulatory reporting responsibilities in simple language this agreement mandates the pharmaceutical company and regulatory authority to transmit the safety information between different parties it may be from one pharmaceutical company to another pharmaceutical company or from pharmaceutical company to regulatory authority for example suppose company a and b are in contractual agreement and company a manufactures the product x and suppose if the physician reports adverse event related to product x to company b then in this situation it is mandatory for the company b to share this adverse event information to company a whereas if company a and b are not in contractual agreement then company b is not under obligation to share the adverse event of product x to company a however company b share the information to regulatory authority and regulatory authority may pass this information to company a that's it